So for today's video, we are going to be making these little bookworm bookmarks. Um, they could be little worry worms. They could be little pocket pals. Right now, they're just tied in a little knot. Um, if you take the knot out, you can see how they fit nicely inside a little book to mark your pages. Um, originally, this is a pattern that I made, oh, quite a few years ago, and I've revised it. Um, this is what they looked like. I just was rummaging through some stuff, and I was like, oh, wait a second. I could make a video of these little guys. I haven't seen anything really like it. I've seen lots of worms and stuff, but nothing like this and so i just revised it with some nicer eyes a little more contoured face antennas instead of hair and i think i did a, a shorter single crochet um but i've got these in like multiple colors you could do any color you want um these would make a great little random act of kindness um, don't let the video time fool you. I went super slow. I spent a ton of time on the eyes. Um, so if you're just putting safety eyes, you could probably get one of these done in an hour or so. I haven't done them in a long time, so I can't recall. But I'm sure a third of this video is just sewing the eyes on. You know, like we all love to do. Okay. Get your gear together and let's get started. So grab your yarn in whatever color you're making your little um, bookmark, bookworm or worry worm or little pocket pal or whatever you're gonna use this guy for. Um, I am gonna go a little slower in this video because I find that a lot of um, beginners are starting to use my patterns and they're saying that they're easy and I know if I was a beginner, they wouldn't have been easy for me. So I'm going to go a little slower if I can. Um, hopefully I catch myself if I get going too fast. Um, so bear with me if you're a fairly advanced crocheter and you just find it agonizing at how slow I'm going. Um, but everyone's got to learn. And I think it's sometimes we should just like make it a little easier for beginners. So you can make your magic circle or your chain two, however you usually crochet in the round. The way I do it is I just make a little knot over my finger, pull that down around and through, hold on to that knot, the, then that knot there, and then you just got a little loop here at the end. You can also do a slip knot. For some reason I can't do a slip knot. I always do it backwards so the so it, the wrong end is on the wrong side, however I do it. Even when I think about it or not think about it. So I just do everything with a little... I decide what um, size of hole I want. So if I was putting 16 stitches in here, it'd be bigger. If I was putting 3, I'd get it a little smaller. But we're going to be putting 8 single crochets into this loop. So you'll grab your yarn... Pull through that hole, grab your yarn again, and pull through. And that is your chain one, and that just secures your um, stitch to this loop as you go around. So we'll start our single crochets. So you go in again, grab your yarn, you pull up and through. You'll have two loops on your hook, and you will pull Grab your yarn and pull through those two loops. And that is one single crochet. So we'll do that again. Grab your yarn. Grab your yarn again and pull it through those two loops. So that's two single crochets. Go in your loop and grab your yarn again and come out through. Grab your yarn again. This is usually called yarn over, but I, I just twist through. So you got three. So I'm going to go a little bit faster because so you probably mostly all know a single crochet. So that's four. 
five, six, seven, and eight. And you'll notice I've been crocheting over the tail as well. That just kind of tucks it in a little bit and makes your work a little bit neater. Okay, so that was round one. And I'm just going to grab a stitch marker. So if I have to stop and yickety yak, I know where I am. So now we're going to be putting two single crochets in each stitch around. So an increase in each stitch. There'll be eight increases for a total of 16. And I'm going to count them as one and two, pause, three and four, and go all the way around. So one and two in the first stitch. And then we'll put three and four in the next stitch. Five and six in the next stitch. Seven and eight in the next stitch. Nine and ten in the next stitch. Eleven and twelve in the next stitch. 13 and 14 in the next stitch and 15 and 16 in the last stitch and you'll know it's the last stitch because your stitch mark will be right there where the next stitch is going to go and that'll be the first stitch of your next row oh I should have brought my uh, counter up here Okay, so you now have 16 stitches. Now you're going to do row 3 to row 10, 16 um, stitches all the way around. And then you'll just flip your marker as you go. So for row 3, 1, 2, 3, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And you're back at your stitch marker. Flip that over, or however you're using one, if you are. So round four, we're going to do another set of 16 stitches all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. You'll notice it's starting to curve, and this is where a lot of beginners get into trouble. Because they're actually, we're actually crocheting on the wrong side of the um, um, piece right now. 
because it's actually supposed to be curving this way and we're supposed to have our hook on this side. Um, if you see, you can see the spirals going kind of around. That's considered the right side. And then if you look at this side, although it has hit its, um, I don't know, merits, I guess, it, it is actually the wrong side. And also you'll usually know your tail is on your wrong side. Not that you can't use that side. If you prefer that side, make sure your tail's around the other side when you're finishing your project. But if you do get in trouble and you find you're on, your hook is on the far side, you know you're, you're doing it opposite of what you're supposed to be doing if you're following most patterns. Okay, so I believe we're about to start row five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, whoops, whoops, oh my goodness, 13, 14, 15, and 16. And we should be starting row six. 16 around, just like before. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. And I can't remember if we're about to start six or seven, but we'll count when we get a little closer to being to um, row 10, so I think this is seven. One, up, slow down, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. And I think we're starting row eight now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, oops, going a little fast. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. I'm totally lost count. I think we're on nine. 
uh, once we finish this round, I'll show you how to um, count your rows if uh, you don't have a um, stitch counter and you've lost count like me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Okay, I think we're about to start row 10, but just to check, if you turn your work so you can see where you started, this little circle is your round one, and you'll see how it kind of unevenly comes around up to here, that's your round two. So you start in your circle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we have one more row of 16, so we have 10 rows. So, <clears throat> excuse me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. Now we're going to stop here and we are going to do the eyes. Um, for this little guy, um, I decided to do um, just a round of eight single crochets, just like we began this one, and then put the safety eyes inside. But they're really hard to get on. I'm not 100% sure that they're going to stick. Um, so you can use... If you're using um, safety eyes without the weight, um, you can probably just skip the next part or whatever while you're putting them on, let it run. Um, if you're going to use googly eyes, those work too. And I'm going to pause the video and come back and start the uh, white part. Sorry, my brain's fried here. <laughs> I don't know why. Okay, so get your white or whichever color you are going to do if you're doing the outside um, parts of the eye. You can also embroider them on. Uh, I haven't done my intro yet, so I don't know what all I'm sharing, but I'll just give you a little sneak peek of, you've probably seen this already, but I mean, this is one of my very first ones I did about, I don't know, 10 years ago, that I totally forgot I even had these. And I've adjusted this pattern. Um, a little cuter for this guy. So that's what he looks like with googly eyes. If I forget to put them in at the beginning, so you'll make your, your loop, your magic circle, your knot like me, your, your slip knot. And then you're just going to, just like you started um, the beginning of the head, you're going to grab your yarn, pull it through, grab your yarn again and pull it through. So, and that's your chain one. And then you're going to do eight single crochets. 
the tighter the better one um, I think I spent more time to um, sewing three sets of eyes onto this guy because I kept making them too loose and when I stitched them on I just didn't like how they were stitching on I think that's three one two three four Seven and eight. And before you slip stitch into the next stitch, you can just count those stitches. Oh, white's probably not the best, but so you count um, these little kind of V's that you made. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And right there is where you're going to put your slip stitch. And that's all there is to making this little eye. Um, you don't even have to put a safety eye in there. You could put a little, oh, I can't get in there. A little black embroidery thread in there if you wanted. And then slip stitch and just pull up and through and through again. And then just pull it through to tie it off. And then you're just going to do the exact same thing for the second piece. And I might actually use the end of this because I think I have two different, I think those are two different whites. I just grabbed out of my scrap pile. And this one seems really soft. And the other one seems kind of scratchy. So I think one is Bernat and one is Red Heart. You make your loop. This is going to be a really long video. I apologize because I'm taking so much time with it. But um, I think he's cute and will be worth it in the end if you hang out and finish him with me. So just like before, we're, we did our chain one and now we're doing our eight single crochets. One. slip stitch into the first stitch you made count if you need to one two three four five six seven eight and then just slip stitch to join and another slip stitch to tie off oh yeah that gives me lots of yarn to sew them on okay So we are going to sew these on before we go any further, just to make it a little easier. I hate sewing stuff on, and uh, if I can do it before it's stuffed from the inside, that makes me a little happier about sewing stuff together. So you notice um, your stitch marker on your project kind of goes over this way so we have one more row of the head to make so to make sure your eyes are kind of even if you're putting them on now before we stuff it this stitch right here is actually going to be here so you want to make that um your two sides not that because you have one more round to make maybe we should just make it Actually, yeah, guys, let's just make it. I thought it'd be easier for sewing if it wasn't smaller, but because we're going to decrease back to eight from 16. But I don't want to put the eyes on them and find out we got them crooked. 
So if we are going to do a decrease um, eight times all the way around. So we'll go from 16 to 18. So for a decrease, you go into your first stitch, grab your yarn and pull through. Don't go through here like if you're single crocheting. Then you go into the next stitch beside that, this one right here. Grab your yarn and pull through and now you have three loops and then you grab your yarn and you go through those three loops and that is a single crochet decrease. And you're going to just keep doing that eight times. So that was one, this is two. Go through your first space, your next space, and then grab your yarn and pull through the three loops. And I'll do that really slow one more time. Through the next stitch, grab your yarn and pull through. Through your next stitch, grab your yarn and pull through. Now grab your yarn and go through all three of those stitches. You now have three decreases. So for your fourth decrease, and a fifth decrease, And a sixth decrease. A seventh decrease. And your eighth in the last two stitches. In, grab your yarn. In, grab your yarn. Grab your yarn and pull through all three stitches. Okay. So now we'll know where our, where our sides are, so we don't have to worry. And I'm gonna make this the back, and this the front. And just kind of figure out where you want your eyes to be. I think I got them down. Make sure this is their back. This is your front, where you can see the Vs of the stitches kind of poking up. Actually, if I went that way, you know what? I'm going to sew them on upside down because the stitches might not fold over like they were when I was having such a hard time on that guy. I went around three times and I still wasn't 100% happy with them. But that might, actual, might actually keep them down how I want them. So since I'm going upside down. Um, I'm going to have to pull this tail through because we do not want that in our way. And you can pin these on if you want. I don't know if I have any pins up here. I think I took them downstairs. I don't have my little pin guy either. Okay, I went and grabbed my little pin guy. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be needing him or not. So I'm going to take my stitch marker out. So that's not in my way. And then line these up how I want them. Probably want them about... So the tops are about three or four stitches down. I think I'll be going in one, two, three... In between four and five or five and six you want to leave a little bit of room down here for the mouth um, you can use pretty much any size eyes you want I am going to be using um, I think tens I used twelves in this guy he's got twelves in him but that was mostly to hide my stitches that I didn't like so let's go a little smaller. Um, you could also put um, googly eyes on him. I think I have um, any size, really. I like the bigger eyes for him. If you want to just see what that looks like. Ooh. 
But I don't know where this is going or if it's ever going anywhere. And I just don't want to be finding eyes somewhere someday. And then having to be like, oh, nice, nice little uh, bookworm. Where's his eyeballs? And then I also have, you could use these guys too, these big ones. Um, these ones have the pink washers. But um, you can also just take them off and you can paint the back white. And then you'd have white little eyes on there. It doesn't show good in this light, but um, if you've done uh, my huggy wuggy, seen my huggy wuggy video, those eyes are basically these eyes painted white on the back. Um, oh, and the red panda, um, not the turning red panda. I didn't haven't done the red panda on here yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna. I might do a cat. Or bear instead. Okay. So, thread your yarn for your eye. And I'm going to have them kind of meet, I think, right in the center. So I'm going to put my string in the center, and hopefully that kind of hides that little bulge. So you're just going to go down, catch a stitch. My already fell out. Maybe I should have pinned it. And then you're going to come up and through that little... V. Now remember mine are upside down so it'd be a little harder to grab. But I think it'll work better. Then you're going to go through the next V and come up through the next stitch underneath. Make sure you're under your eyeball because if you're out here in these stitches you're going to see um, little white lines. Um, oh, sh right there. See? There's one little white line right there. And that was me trying very hard not to get any white lines there. And so we went down that one. So we're going to go up through this one. Catching those two V's that are kind of upside down on us right now. Oh yeah, this is working way better. Why didn't I think of going backwards before? So back down and through. Come up through the green. And then come up through your next set of V's in your eyeball. And then back down. And over through your next green stitch. I kind of left that tail in the way. I think I'm going to thread him out through the back. Sometimes I like to tie that little tail to the tail I sewed with, which is probably what I'm going to do, but I didn't leave a very long piece. So you can do what I just did, or you can tuck it in underneath and tie however you would like to tie. So get back up through the next stitch. Yep, that's looking really nice. Always a bonus when your sewing works out. This should be one of our last stitches, if not the last. Yeah, I'm going to make that the last. 
last. See now this is where, see I shouldn't have, I made that too tiny now to get into. I'm gonna put the back on this eye if I can. Um, what I might do is um, sew the second eye on off camera because this is going to be a super long video the way I'm doing it. Um, and I will meet, meet you back to start down in here. Um, once you get your second eye on, um, put your stuffing inside um, and do your mouth. Or should I just, shoot, I should do the mouth with you. Okay, I don't even know if I can get this to the eye. Oh, I could. How can I push it in with one hand? I think I got it. I can't even see. Oh, there we go. Uh, um, a lot of people would glue these on right now, I think, but I don't have any glue. I feel like that's not on there very good. I want to make sure it's at least down. You know, it is down past the first one. If you're making these for a child or something, make sure you um, glue that down just to be sure that that's not going to pull out. I mean, probably that's what most child would be having this. There, I'm just blabbing now. Okay. I think that's the right spot. I can get it in there. It feels like it's not going in a stitch. There we go. Hopefully you aren't struggling as much as me with these sewing parts. Like I said, it's, it took me longer to sew the eyes on than it did to do the whole guy. <laughs> oh well, I guess I'm just going to have a really long time sitting at the computer loading this. Jealous out to everybody that's decided they're uh, not doing the white parts. And you've just skipped along to the rest. <laughs> oh, see, what is that? Um, other than this video, I will not be uh, doing any eyeballs on the rest of them like this. I'm just going to be doing the safety eyes without the white. But I wanted to make sure I at least had this part in the tutorial so that anyone that wanted the white could put it on. See, somehow I'm not doing the size nicely. I'm not sure why. Redo. No. It's just gonna be how it's gonna be. Even the eyes, even the safety eye looks funny. It's 
See, I knew I should have done this off camera. same stitch but I just it seems a little loose so that's what we're doing I don't know why there's that little bump there on that one well it's gonna have to be so I'm just gonna tie these two whites together because I can't get inside to tie them Oh, I got a <coughs> cough, excuse me. <coughs> All this talking and no drinking, I think, gives you a dry throat. Make sure you get that knot way up in there if you're doing it like this. I'm going to cut those and we'll put the back on our other eye. And then I'm going to go get a drink before we do the mouth. Let's see if I can get that guy. Oh, I can get him over here. That's handy dandy. So much yarn there. I got it. Okay, I'll be right back and we'll do the mouth. Oh no, I put that down lower and it looks like I put it way too low. Okay, for the mouth, get your black or whatever color you're using. You only need a little scrap piece. Get that out of my way. So, you're going to go up about a row or so under the eye, kind of in the middle. That's too close for me, so I'm going to go kind of the outside. Pull most of your yarn and tail through. You'll use that to tie at the end. And then somewhere close to the center, I'm going to push it up, up there. No, one more down. Go in the center, over even with this eye, approximately where you had this stitch, but on the side. And then just go back down in. You can check if it's evenish. Even enough for me. And then just go back down and out. And you can give them a little bit of a pull. And then tie them off. There, we're almost done the hard part. Or the time-consuming part, whatever that off. I even did use the pins. This guy's going to be as cute as the other one. And get your Red back. If you're unsure, sometimes this gets twisted around. Untwist it as best you can. And when you pull, you want the top piece to be the one that's sliding like this. You don't want it to be sliding like this. Then you know you have the hook in the wrong way. I don't know how much it matters, but for me, I just always make sure that it's exactly how I would have ended um, when I was crocheting. I think my mouth is crooked, but 
guess that'll be some character. Now you're, oh, uh, get your stuffing. Sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. Well, there won't be a whole bunch of pausing in this video. <laughs> you have lots of time to keep up with me or wait for me. I like to stuff the head fairly firm, but not so firm that the stitches are showing. So if you got stitches showing, you've got too much stuffing in there. You don't want to see it coming out through the back of any of your stitches. <clears throat> now put your hook in. Make sure it's the right way. And you're going to fold this together. And you want to have four stitches in here. You're going to feel like you can only put three. So that four stitch has to go somewhere. So I'm going to go in the first stitch on either side of the stitch I'm in. Just one single crochet. Pull a little tight if you need to. And then go in the next two that are across from each other. Another single crochet. And then you're going to go what's going to look like your last set of stitches. Here and here. And then you're going to have to figure out where you want to put that fourth stitch depending on how you stitch the rest of it. Um, one, two, three. I think I'm going to... You don't want to go in this hole right here because it'll make a much bigger hole um, in the end of your project. So you want to kind of go beside that hole somewhere and through to the other side somewhere and then finish off that stitch. I think I'm still going to have a bit of a hole, but hopefully it won't be too noticeable. So you got your four stitches there. Now, usually when you're, we're going to start going in rows instead of rounds. And usually at the end of each row, you're going to chain one and turn. For this guy, we're not chaining one. We're just going to turn. Um, so you want to make that turning chain just a bit on the looser side till you get used to um, your tension for that. So turn your work. And you're going to go, want to go into this very first stitch right where you're, um, where this is coming out of. Sorry, I don't know the technical. So no chain. So one single crochet. Two single crochet. Three single crochet. And a fourth sing single crochet. And then you're going to turn. And then you're going to be going in this stitch right here, right away. So one, two, three, and you're going to have to get into right here. You'll see this little bar going across. You want to be above that, but under these two pieces of stitch right here the V in your um, where you turned. So see so you're above that bar and you're under the V. Is it focusing? And then you grab your yarn and finish that stitch. And you're just going to keep going back and forth like that till you're about eight inches long. There's something wrong with that stitch. If it seems like one's really loose, just undo and then come back and do it again. This way you get kind of a nicer edge. Anytime I do a, um, a row of stitches back and forth, I always do one less. Um, like say if it's a half double crochet and they want you to do two chains, I only do one chain. If it's a row of double crochets, and they want you to do um, three chains at the end of each row. I only do two. 
Otherwise, I feel like it just leaves these little kind of bumps. So you're still doing four, turn, four, turn. Um, so this gives it a much neater edge and it's not um, wavy or bumpy. It's got a nice, otherwise I feel like I have to come around um, with a border of some kind. And I don't know if that's just me or everybody has that problem. I'm sure everybody doesn't have that problem. Um, but... So this is why you saw a tape measure at the beginning. Because we're just going to keep going. I think in the one, um, in this one, I ended up with about 40 rows. But depending on how much um, the thickness of your yarn and your if you're using the same hook because you could pretty much use any yarn and any matching hook I would just go down a little bit like I'm two sizes down from a number four um, medium weight yarn so if you had like a, a six or a seven weight yarn um, you probably could use a five it's whatever you've seen just and if your stitches aren't um you got a looser stitch it's, you're gonna not need as many rows if you've got a tighter stitch you're gonna need a couple extra more rows okay that one seems loose to me so i'm gonna undo it pull it and then continue and redo it there's nothing like getting all the way to the end and seeing a little loose bump stitch and wondering, did I accidentally chain? That's probably going to be the hardest part for most people doing this because they're so used to chaining at the end and turning. So I am also going to do... A little it's probably the one of the first things I ever learned from my grandmother it's another little bookworm but it's like a, a chain with a spiral at the end just a nice quick little easy thing to try um, it won't be today because I probably need about three days to get this uploaded but in the near future I will be having that I might be making an actual worry worm I'm just not sure there's so many so it's like do you but then again someone might enjoy it um, what else Oh, um, I don't, uh, sorry, I'm going to just plug myself for a second. If you are new to this channel, you can certainly uh, give me a like and a subscribe um, or leave a comment. I love hearing that people are enjoying my patterns. I'll also have a link to my Facebook craft page down in the description if you want to share any of your work on that page I pin to the top I have a little post that says YouTube share or something similar to that you can certainly post a photo on that thread I'm not on Facebook a lot but I well I'm on it but I'm not like I'm just checking notifications and stuff, so I will see it. Um, you can also suggest stuff if you'd like. Although I have two suggestions that I'm having a problem with already. I have one... Um, I actually didn't look at the name. I think it's just initials. I'm going to assume lady, but I'm probably wrong. I mean, I shouldn't assume. 
because guys crochet too. But asked me for a, uh, is it Casino Royale or Royal Clash? It's a little guy named um, Mini Recky or something. I drew the cutest little picture of him. I thought it had all the rows and stuff figured out, but once I started trying to do the armor and the chest plate, I just got stuck. So he's sitting with legs and a half a body. And then I have another lady that's asked um, if I do a cat next, which I really want to do. I just can't decide if I should continue it on with my um, Chinese New Year ones because I was going to do a tiger and a cat. But now I'm not 100% sure I like my Chinese New Year videos because they are exactly the same. Except I changed the facial features and I'm thinking, should I have made some standing? Because I made the little um, beastie bunny of, oh, I don't know, Canterbury or something off that Holy Grail movie. I made him standing and I really like him better than the sitting ones. So I might make some similar to the turning red panda that I made. I have the pattern. I just might have to make his head a little bigger because I think the panda one might have too small of a head. So should we see? It's definitely not long enough yet, but let's just see. We gotta be at least halfway. So when you measure your guy, you want to measure from his neck down to um, where you're cro finished crocheting. So right now, this guy is not quite four and a half inches. So we're just over halfway. Um, Still going four and turning, four and turning. Oh, also, you guys are welcome to sell anything that you have made off my channel as far as the finished product. Um, obviously not the pattern. Um, but the finished product you may do whatever you would like to with. And then I was also thinking, I'm not going to do it because I just have a ton of videos of the same thing. But this guy doesn't have to be a worm. He could be a cat or a dog or a pig or a lion. He would just have to kind of give him some ears, which is pretty simple. Um, even if you're a beginner. Once you got the basic um, shapes, it's not hard to make a few little um, pieces. Even like making this eye and folding it in half could be an ear. Oops. Um, but if you do use my pattern as a base, which you're welcome to, just like give me a note that the base of the project was by me or my YouTube channel or this video. Just give it a little link and share it. That would be appreciated anyways. Hmm, I can't see the... See the... Oh, there it is. I made that one a little on the tight side. How are you guys doing? Hmm? Um, also, in the comments, you can let me know if you like the videos like this going a lot slower. I find I at least followed my video one time. Um, sometimes before it's published, sometimes after. Just to kind of make sure I didn't make a mistake. And I have. Sometimes I call the wrong stitch the wrong thing. 
I call the loop stitches and the stitches loops and <laughs> oh what's happening here um, but I do know I start off slow usually and then I speed up so at first I find I'm waiting for myself and then I'm like oh I can barely keep up with myself which is kind of funny I'm trying to go nice and slow. I feel like I need to measure again, but there's no way it's long enough yet. I'll do two more rows and see. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll count the rows too. So anyone that's not sure how you count these rows or what to look for. So when you're counting the single crochet stitches, you see how there's kind of like a a bump, a bump, a bump, a bump. That's two stitches or two rows. So we, I think that's one row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and then uh, where we sewed it together. So we've got about six more rows, six or seven more rows. Well, let's measure it too. Yeah, that's just over six. So not quite two more inches to go. Oh, that's the first time I hit the camera. That's pretty good. Usually I'm always hitting it. One time I had it so low that I was always hitting it with the end of my hook. And I was like, ding, ding, ding. Any of you on here from the group Random Act of Kindness, this would be a perfect thing for that. I think I maybe wouldn't spend as much time on the face. Just pop in the safety eyes. two more rows and I'm going to measure again. It's looking close. Oh, still got another inch to go. just realized I had a secret to how to sit so my hands weren't floating in the air and I forgot all about sitting that way 
if I, if I cross my legs, I can rest one of my elbows on my knee, and I just have one floating in the air. Actually, I'm probably running out of storage space. I should be checking that. One time I did a video that was a half hour long, straight through, and I was just about to finish it up. I was just doing the last six stitches in the round, and I was going to slip stitch and then tie it off, and my battery ran out. No, I ran out of storage, or I think. One of the two. And the whole video disappeared, which I don't understand. It should still be there and just stop. But imagine doing this whole tail and then, or body or whatever it is, and then your video is gone. And it happens. All right, back to the two more and measure. It's a little shorter or a little longer. It's not a big deal. I don't even know where I came up with eight inches. That's just how long the ones I did years ago were, so I kept with it. Okay, guy, are you long enough yet? Um. Not quite. I think I'm going to do two more and then we'll tie it off. So, it seems like it's longer than the other one, but maybe it's not. So. Hopefully I can get the next few in and finish it off before I run out of storage. Okay, I'm going to say that's 8 inches long. So, if you're not here yet, pause the video till you got 8 inches. And then there's just two rows left and a tie and the little squiggly of hair. So, to finish it off, you're going to do a decrease, two of them. So you go in the stitch, grab your yarn and pull through. In the next stitch, grab your yarn and pull through. And then you're going to go through all three loops on your hook. And then you're going to repeat that. In and grab your yarn the next stitch and grab your yarn and then pull oops, I got an extra piece there and then pull through all three loops you're gonna turn it and I have written I, don't, I think I have to do another one but I think it just needs a single crochet in there if you're in the middle of the point just do a single crochet and then tie it off if you're not quite in the middle, you can do a decrease. So then I just pull a little bit out like this, tighten that, pull another, your piece that's attached to the yarn, measure that about the same length as what your loop is, cut it, and then you're just gonna tie a I don't know what kind of knot it is, but you know where you go around and then you put it all through. It's basically the same way I start my um, rounds. And then you just tighten it up and that should stay. And then there's no ends to weave in either. You cut that middle one measure about how much tail you want. I think this one's just over an inch. 
just to make them even. And then you can just take another chunk, about four or five inches long. And you'll just stick your hook in the, in the center and come out in front. Grab the middle of that yarn and pull it through. And then you want these to go through that loop. So you can use your hook if you want. Grab your ends and pull through, just like you used to do the old latch hook rugs. And then cut that an inch or more, however you want it. Longer, shorter. And there you go. A little bookworm. Oh, I put eyebrows on that guy. Well, you can still, you could go back in. Should we put eyebrows on him? Where did I put my black? Um, when I originally did the eyebrows, I used the, when I did the mouth, I just went up with it and put the eyebrows in. So you're going to want to start back here somewhere. Figure out where you want your eyebrow to start and end. I really want him to have pointed down ones, but I don't want him to look like he's mad. So about the width of the eye. Oh, this one actually is looking mad. I did that when I said I shouldn't have. Oh, that's not a good eyebrow. I think I got his eyes a little high. So we got to go up a bit. Just try and make sure they're even. Oh yeah, that'll be better. You may have to do it a couple of times. To make sure they're the right length. Come out the back. Hopefully that's not too far. I think that'll work. Okay. Actually, you can even contour his head a little bit that way. They're <laughs> funny looking eyebrows, I'll say. I'm going to pull them a bit. And then tie that and cut it off. Just thread those ends into his head somewhere to kind of hide them out of sight. tied that but I just think I tied it like you tie a tie kind of or a scarf around no well, I mean you're not gonna tell what he is this way but it's kind of a cute way for him to be I should have done it the other way I mean you wouldn't use him like this as a bookmark um how come he looks such a different shape anyway well, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, comment if you feel like you, you want to comment. Um, uh, be safe and happy crocheting.